So we're going live in three, two, one. Live and recording. Over to you, Anil, sir. Good afternoon and very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, this is a very uh, first initiative of its kind that we have taken up on uh, our platform. And we thought, let us start with Lakshmi. So Lakshmi, as we all know, is the Lakshmi. You may call it Lakshmi of the house, Graha Lakshmi. You can call it Lakshmi, the money that you have in your hand, whatever. And we all are run by Lakshmi. So we thought, the first session of its kind we will do will be on how to handle our own Lakshmi, the finance sutra. So I'll come to that. But before that, let me introduce the institutions which are responsible for uh, getting this in event together. So let me first of all invite uh, Sweden leader Neha Malhotra. She represents V Network is an ex Air Force officer and a learning and development consultant. She helps medium and enterprise build a healthy work culture. She helps solve people problem and increase team productivity. She has been a certified soft skills trainer. And as she says, she has been able she has been training till now almost like over 1500 adults and young adults. So Neha ji, will you speak about the organization that you handle and a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Anil, for your kind words. A very good evening to all of you. Uh, like Mr. Anil just introduced me, my name is Neha Malhotra, and I help companies build ownership and accountability in teams uh, and improve the company culture because I believe that a leader builds people and it is the people of the organization who build the business. I am a core member of V Network, and my work is to connect all the women entrepreneurs and we grow together. I would like to take this opportunity to briefly introduce to you all our women entrepreneurship cell, V Network. Here, we work together to mentor women and startups to move to the next level under the able guidance of our chairperson, Dr. Sangeeta Kamath. We believe each one of us has a strength in ourselves that we can leverage for the advantage of each other because when women support women, incredible things happen. So if you wish to join hands with us, connect with us on Swayamhu Messenger. Thank you so much. Thank you, Neha ji. Uh, let me now invite uh, Dr. Rama Venkata Chalam. Can I have her on the screen, please? Dr. Rama is the HOD for Department of Business Studies at St. Mira's College for Girls. She has been teaching over 25 years and she is also the coordinator of Center for Women Entrepreneurship, CWE as it is called. Then she is also the president of IIC, which is Institution Innovation Council, which happens to be a Government of India initiative. And her area of expertise is entrepreneurship, social ent entrepreneurship, and organizational behavior. Dr. Rama, please. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Anil. Good evening to each and every one of you present here. I'm uh, Dr. Rama Venkat from St. Mira's College for Girls. 
as you all know, St. Mira's College for Girls is part of the Mira Movement in Education, founded in 1962 by the visionary wow. philosopher, Saint Sadhu T.L. Vaswani, as the first college set up exclusively for women in Pune. We have been ably guided by our spiritual guru, Dada J.P. Vaswani, and our dear principal, Dr. Gulshan Gidwani, uh, in achieving our mission, that is empowerment of women through the triple training of the head, hand, and heart. To achieve this, we have a number of initiatives that has been started for the students of the college. One such initiative is the Center for Women Entrepreneurship. My colleague Abradita will talk more about Center for Women Entrepreneurship and its association. Thank you once again for giving us an opportunity to be part of this very interesting webinar. Thank you, uh, Dr. Rama. Now let me invite uh, Abradita Chatterjee. As uh, Dr. Rama said, she will speak more about that initiative, but let me just uh, tell you a brief about Abradita Ji. She has an experience of 17 plus years in academics and corporate houses an area of expertise being communication skills, social media marketing, and personality development. Networking, she also happens to be the vice president of IIC and co-coordinator of CWE, and she works very closely along with Dr. Rama. Abratita Chatterjee, please. Thank you so much, sir, for that wonderful and elaborated int uh, introduction for us. Uh, good afternoon, everyone here. And uh, thank you so much for inviting us. And it's an absolute honor. I would like to briefly introduce the Center for Women Entrepreneurship and its association. CWE was formally inaugurated in the year 2017. It aims to create an environment that promotes and stimulates the spirit of entrepreneurship amongst the students of the college through various education programs, events, activities, and research. It is indeed a proud moment for us to be collaborated with the prestigious Tata Institute of Social Science. And we have set up an incubation center for social entrepreneurship where we are giving our budding entrepreneurs to explore opportunities in the social space. In fact, the pandemic has been a boon to us as we were able to explore a number of opportunities. We have successfully set up the Institution Innovation Council, IIC, and the Rural Entrepreneurship Development Cell, REDC. Both of these are Ministry of Education, Government of India initiatives, where the focus is on promoting innovation and entrepreneurship amongst the students and faculty members. We are happy to share that we recently inaugurated the Startup Club and the IPR Club under the aegis of IIC. We are constantly collaborating and networking to take seed WE to the next level. On behalf of St. Mira's College for Girls, a special mention of gratitude to Dr. Sangeeta Kamar. Thank you, ma'am, for having us over. Thank you, Abhrajita ji. Uh, now let me invite uh, Dr. Sangeeta Kamar. Now, Dr. Sangeeta wears so many hats that probably she also doesn't have a count of those hats. Anyway, let me try and uh, enumerate some of them. She happens to be partner of White Collar Legal LLP, director Max Plor, advisory council member Maxell Foundation, founder partner Step Up Advisor LLP, and she also happens to be conceiver of Swayambhu. Dr. Thank you so much, Anilji. Thank you so much, Anilji. Namaskar and a very good evening to everybody present here and everybody watching us live on our Swayambhu FB page. Uh, today, I will uh, represent Swayambhu. Swayambhu is our registered social movement to transform the backbenchers to front runners. A simple social movement where we encourage youth in the age group of 20 to 30 who feel that they are selling short because they have not proved anything great academically. That means the backbenchers. We work together, mentor them and become their emotional GPS, help them to self-actualize and be self-reliant via internships which we provide to them 
in the field of their choice. That means we will provide them internship on what they love to do. And this is the way we are able to encourage candidates towards self-confidence and become self-sufficient and Atma Nirbhar at the earliest. So with uh, fantastic mentors, we are able to do very well in spite of the pandemic. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank each and every mentor, every patron, and every family connected to us with Swayambhu. I would also like to place on record that uh, Anilji Garg has been our staunch supporter right from thought, right from the thought I had. And uh, thank you, Anilji. I haven't been saying that enough. And I think this is the right time and auspicious moment now that all the Lakshmis are here. I also take the opportunity to thank Sen Gupta sir for uh, having your expertise and wisdom shared on this platform. Thank you, Dr. Rama and uh, Chatterjee ma'am for being a part of this initiative. And of course, Warden Leader Neha Malotra for your wonderful, wonderful presence with us today. Yes, sir. Over to you, Anilji. Uh, thank you, Sangeeta ji. Uh, very interesting. On one side, we have uh, Santa members and also associated where we try and bring in from back bench, front benches. And then we have a host of ladies here who are trying to build entrepreneurs out of them. So very interesting and total personality development spectrum is available here. Interestingly, nobody talked about finance. So Saibal, you are saved. We will talk about finance. Let me first of all introduce to all of you our today's guest, Mr. Saibal Sen Gupta. He looks like a very simple person looking at him. He happens to be a chartered accountant also. He happens to be a CFO of a company called Orient Electric. So if, I, if you see fans in your uh, ceilings, you will find Orient fans there, most of you. Now, there are a few things that, would, that I would like to tell about uh, Saibal. I have had a very long working relationship with him. We worked together in an organization for almost 10 years. And uh, to call him a chartered accountant is actually a misnomer. In his own words, he says, I am an ordinary chartered accountant with extraordinary dreams to challenge the status quo in the accessible world around and influence people to bring in a step change in ways of working and uplift lives of people. I would like to mention something here. In any organization in a corporate world, everybody's, every transaction finally lends into finance. But unfortunately, most of the guys in the corporate world, which are not part of finance, understand very little of finance. So they will do their transactions and then ultimately the impact will be on finance, which will not be correct. So first time I came to know of Sable's talent as a mentor was when he started a program called Finance Dilse. Finance Dilse was a program which was launched, launched in our corporate, which was Dabar India at that time, which was aimed at training everybody on basic finances that everybody should know when he's part of a cooperate. Now here, he also says that though he has been doing FMCG companies, but other than looking at the typical finance function, he has been developing people who will have a different perspective towards corporates working. He himself is a diploma holder in painting. He's an ardent uh, stage performer. His wife happens to be a radio artist. She sings Ravinder Sangeet and other Sangeet. So he also wears a number of hats. His one of the sentences that he always says in most of his uh, talks, I would like to quote here, quote, inner fragrance is unstoppable. It has to flourish. And I love this like anything because of this, when Sangeeta ma'am told me that let us have a session like this. So the first person that I could think of was Saibal Sen 
Gupta. So Saibal, the stage is all set. We have just reached 100 participants. So Century, from my side, you take it forward. So slog over to start. Over to you, Saibal Sen Gupta. Namaskar. Good afternoon to everybody, to all the ladies, to all the Lakshmis, and also the men who are here. First of all, uh, that introduction was a bit too long. I don't know whether I'm worthy of all that. But first and foremost, once again, thank you, Dr. Sangeeta. Thank you, Neha ji. Thank you, Dr. Rama ji. Thank you, Abhinadita ji. Uh, I really, really feel so proud and honored and humbled to be part of this and to be associated with Sambhu. I'm delighted to have this session going. I hope it really, really uh, makes a lot of meaning to all of you. Now, uh, uh, Anil, uh, can I start? It's... You can, you can, you can. Okay. Uh, I would like to mention one thing over here. My first financial planning manager and mentor that I have seen and experienced in my life was a woman some more than 50 years back, and that was my Nani Ji. My grandmother used to be a perfect financial planner of those days. And ever since then, I used to think, if my Nani Ji can do it, why can all the other men, women can't do it? Because in those days, that used to be the belief that women used to be housewives mostly and all that. But soon after, with my growing, I came to realize what a myth and what a misnomer that was. And I came across some wonderful ladies in India and they answered my question and they said to themselves, yes, we can. If you look around, this particular, all the photographs, bunch of photographs, you will be able to recognize all of them. And there are many, many, many who could not be captured in the screen. And let me tell you, I am 100% sure many one of you would have actually closely seen them or even closely met them. For me, let me tell you, I personally worked with one of the ladies over here, and that is Mrs. Arundhati Bhattacharya. 30 years back, way back in 1991, I was associated with her when I used to work for a company and she used to be an ordinary manager in State Bank of India in Calcutta. Three Sabal, years I worked with her. Sabal, your screen and, has not come. Sorry? Your screen has not come. Is it? Is my screen visible now? It's okay now. Is it visible now? Perfect, perfect. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Technical glitches. As I was saying, this is Mrs. Arundhati Bhattacharya, who was the exiting, who is the exited chairman of State Bank of India before uh, she had left State Bank. And I had the privilege to work for her with her for three years during uh, some of the corporate days 30 years back. That makes me believe that every ordinary woman is actually having the power to become great in their own terms. It's a firm belief for me. And I think each one of the women seated over here will be able to achieve all that you desire and you aspire to do that. So with those words, welcome you all once again, ladies. Introducing you to the Financial Sutra. I would not be giving any financial classes over here. I will not be speaking about any theories. If, if that is something you have at the back of your mind, sorry. I will be talking about my experiences in finance, about some learnings I had throughout my life, 
in my 30 plus years of experience that has taught me, that has built me. I have seen successes, I have seen failures, and that's how financial management gets done. And that's what I strongly believe. So with that, let's go ahead with Financial Sutra. Now, as Anil mentioned to start with, that this is all about Lakshmi. Finance is Lakshmi, Laks Lakshmi is woman, and Lakshmi is Mangal. Lakshmi represents Mangal, and that is why Mangal Sutra is nothing else than Financial Sutra. And this is how the Financial Sutra gets done. It is not about finance, it is not about money. It is about family, it is about health, it is about own property, house, transport, jobs, education, career, wealth, stability, recognition, everything all put together is Financial Sutra. This is a gentleman with I have respected throughout my life, Mr. Warren Buffet. Many of you would have seen or heard him and these are the two rules, which are the golden rules. Throughout this presentation, I will attempt referring to him because he had given some very wise mantras. And this is one mantra, never ever lose money. I think women are the best in doing that. They really, really very carefully save and protect families' money. They are brilliant. I know many, many families where the entire family wealth has got created by the housewives and the homemakers. So marvelous achievement for them. And that is what the women can actually are masters in doing it. Never lose money and never forget rule number one. And that is never to lose money. Money starts with the earnings. The earnings, what you do with them? You actually do either a saving or investment or you spend. Do you spend first and then save? Or do you save first and then spend? Let me reverse, let me reserve this thought for a moment. I will come back to you on this thought, what Mr. Warren Buffet has told about it. But let's proceed with this. Whether you save first or spend first, irrespective, you do spend and you do save. But what you do with that? With the savings, you buy your property, you buy, make your investments, or you become an entrepreneur as well. You can do your own startup, you can do your own business. And if you spend money, you spend it on your essentials, which are your household expenses. You pay for your education, for your children, for yourself maybe. You pay for your EMIs, for your property, etc. You pay for your health, your insurance, your medical support, your medicines, and whatever is left after your essentials, you also choose to spend something for your discretionary spends. That includes some fine dining once in a while in the restaurant with your family. That includes some luxury travel trips overseas or in India. That may include some select premium lifestyle that you would choose to have all put together is what you spend and save. And what it originates from is originating from your earnings. This is what Mr. Warren Buffet had to say. The more you learn, the more you earn. Without learning, it is difficult to earn. Learning does not get limited only and only to universities and colleges. There are many, many ways that you can learn. You can learn even sitting at home. You can learn through our online courses. I have just dropped some examples for your reference. I'm sure all of these are known to you as well. And I'm 100% sure many of you, or rather most of you, would be actually accessing many of these online courses once in a while. Convert these learnings to your earnings. Or if you look at the vice versa, if you want to earn, let's do some learning first before we get to earn. 
So once you have done that, you know your courses of earning money. Thankfully, in today's age of digital, there are so many options which did not used to be there some 20, 30 years back. But today, the younger generations, I really, really envy them. And what younger even look at us? I'm also learning at this age. I also use some of these learnings. And I also do get tempted into get into some of these earning avenues. But all these kinds of avenues are open to all of you and to all of us. I could not capture all of them. You may be wondering why some of your chosen platforms or your chosen avenues or profession is not featuring over here. Please excuse me for that. Just in the interest of space and time, I could not record all of them. All that I wanted to tell is that whichever avenue or whichever profession or whichever mode of earning you want to choose, you have an avenue both to learn as well as to do business. If you want to sell your products, today YouTube has become a big channel of selling products. What is not mentioned over here is your Amazons and Flipkarts have opened up channels for selling your products and services as well. You can open your own blogs and you can open your own websites to do your e-commerce of your own products and services that you want to do. You can take tuitions through several platforms. You can cook and serve. I think Pandemic has opened up a huge avenue, not only for learning cooking through YouTube, but also to spread happiness and to support. I mean, just in the last seven days, I was going through so many uh, activities that has come up, so many avenues that have come up where women, even homemakers, are cooking and serving food to COVID patients. It is marvelous. It cannot be a better social service than that in present times. Blogging, another huge opportunity for earning. Writing, surveys, data entry. There are plenty and plenty. I can keep on naming them. If you have heard about transcriptions, whether it is medical transcription or any other kinds of transcription, so many avenues are there. Artists, painting, any kind of artisan works, any kind of homemaking. I know of women entrepreneurs who during the pandemic started business of making their candles at home and selling it out and are actually becoming very, very successful. You can make a career out of your learnings. You can become an entrepreneur. You can start up your own business. And of course, you can become a self-employed professional either through a great consultancy or through your professional services that you can get. So the whole sum and substance is that learn and earn and earn while you are learning. And that's how the cycle will continue. As we see, the audience today will definitely be divided into these three. Either you're a housewife or a homemaker, or you're an employed in your own right, in your own profession, or in your, you're an entrepreneur yourself. If you're a housewife, you can be self-employed as well. Nothing stops you. You can be self-managed, and that is your independence and you can do it very, very successfully. You can do at a compensation. You can do while earning some fees, or if you're into investments through some returns or interests, or even for that matter, you have, if you have property, you can actually get rentals out of such property. So housewives are not just homebound as today. If you're employed, you're full-time contracted, you are a salaried person and you have your own career to make out over there. And of course, if you're an entrepreneur, you are the boss of your own business. You are the boss of your own destiny. You are the boss of your own activity that you want to do. And you earn profits out of there. So whichever way you look at, whichever class you look at, or whichever, wherever you are placed, you are having an enormous opportunity to be utilizing your time, a substantial part of your time, either full-time or part-time, into engaging yourself, not only for making money, but also for doing service to the community. 
also satisfying yourself, also being happy and healthy. Therefore, learn and burn to earn. This is one of the big learnings I have from Mr. Warren Buffet. If you buy things you do not need, soon you will have to sell things you need. Wow, what a statement. Even at my age, a few months back, when I, when I was reading through this, it was a real awakening for me. And it's so very true. We don't realize these small, small things and they count a lot. A lot. And I will give you some small tips over here. And I'm sure you know about them. Those of you who know, keep it as an awakening. Keep it as a reminder. Those you are seeing it for the first time or realizing it for the first time could be an interest to you. So you earn and you spend. That is what we talked about, right? There are three ways and three directions in which this goes. Either you first earn and then you spend. Or secondly, you spend first and then you earn. And thirdly, also you spend first and then you earn. Let us look at the consequences of each one of them. Firstly, earn and then spend. Of course, this is a healthy habit. You spend as much as you earn. You spend as per your capability. You don't blow yourself off. You do not go out of control. The problem arises when you spend before you earn. You may be wondering, how is this possible? Of course, for the last two decades, at least, maybe more, the credit card has actually opened up this avenue to first spend and then to earn. Because you have to pay, you have to pay 30 days later. Nothing stops you in buying today and paying it off when you earn the money. Think about it for once. What happens for X, Y, Z reasons? Suddenly your earning stops, but the spend hasn't because the commitment has been made through the credit card. Many a times, and this became a very common practice a decade back where people used to use multiple credit cards, use one credit card to pay off another credit card. All that you're doing is getting into a debt trap because it is a vicious cycle which is very, very difficult to come out of. I will talk more, of, more and more about this debt in, few, in, in, in the coming slides. Let me talk about the third situation, which is also spending first and then earning. Here, a word of caution. Everybody who earns comes under the catchment of the income tax department. And these days, there were times a couple of decades back when the income tax department used to go hunting around people who are earning. Trust me, they have become very smart. They now hunt around people who spend and then they catch hold of you. How the hell did you spend? And why do they do this? Don't forget that lock and key is in the hands of the income tax department, which is called PAN, the permanent account number. Every person who has to deal with money, even spend money in today's context beyond a threshold limit it has to be mandatorily holding a pan. And if you mandatorily hold a pan, you are bound, duty bound to file your tax returns. The moment you file your tax returns, you come under the net of the government. So just a little, little bit of word of caution over here, please don't plan to spend before you earn. And that's why to make life simpler, easier, and modern in today's context, I always recommend go digital. Because going digital invokes a lot of self-discipline. It completely eliminates cash in today's context, even if not completely, quite substantially. You can actually minimize your ATM withdrawals. You do not use credit cards for your cash withdrawals and limit yourself only to the credit statements. Therefore, have some self-discipline there as well. Majority of the payments you can actually do online. It is so convenient as of today because it creates transparency and it enables a trade. Let me tell you over here, there used to be the good old days where people used to think 
to save tax or rather to evade tax, or let me put it even more decently, to avoid tax. People don't, did not used to take bills. People did not used to record transactions. That is where it landed up to huge amount of scams and all those things started happening and the government started chasing people. And you know many of the people who are convicted almost as of today. So therefore, upfront, voluntarily going digital is a much, much better option to go transparent voluntarily and control your own transactions. Let me prompt you a few steps, few, few points over here. Mini maximize the credit card by limiting your credit exposure so that you don't go overboard. Advantage, take the full advantage of reward points so that you can actually get a lot of freebies. You can actually capitalize on your credit card period. Officially, the credit card companies give you a credit period of 25 to 30 days on record from the billing date. But if you can manage your spends in an appropriate manner, you can actually get 50 to 60 days of credit period. Enjoy discounts and offers. All these comes as a bonanza to you. Secondly, do not expose your bank account. Your primary bank account, this is always an advice because I have burnt my fingers. And in today's age of cyber crimes, spam mails, it is extremely risky to expose your own bank account where your primary earnings are sitting. So therefore, it is a cyber risk of exposing the bank account. Do not link wallets to bank accounts. That is a preferred route, though the wallet Providers today encourage you to do that. Uh, yes, it is an option. I'm not discouraging you, but that is a recommendation from my side. It is better not to directly link up wallets to bank accounts, but use the wallets as wallets and keep filling up and replenishing them. And make only the CC, that is a credit card payments from the bank account, which can be directly controlled by you. The third checkpoint is on times of automating the payments. You know, this is a personal experience of mine. Five to seven years back, I used to pay thousands and thousands of rupees by way of penalties and interests. I don't know how many of you have experienced this. The penal interest of not paying any credit card on time or defaulting on any bills whether it is your telephone bills or whether it is your credit card bills or whether it is your any other utility bills, the penal interest, sometimes the absolute amount may look very small, but if you accumulate them and percentage wise, the penal interests are exorbitant. You will be surprised some credit card companies go up to the extent of 30, 35, 36% in terms of charging penal interest. In an absolute amount, you may feel, oh, it's just 1,000 rupees. Sorry, let me pay it and finish it off. It is not actually so. I actually did this exercise on myself and realized I've actually lost thousands and thousands of rupees by this. So therefore, you can automate the payments through various auto bill pay routes to avoid the penalties and avoid the delays in payments. There is a hidden reason. In the digital platform, you are being closely watched by the banks from behind which you do not even come to know. And as a result, there is something called the civil score. That is, in simple terms, the credit rating score of yours in personal capacity. If you keep defaulting your credit card payments, what really happens is your, your civil score suffers over a period of time. You will not even get to know of it. If you go through your net banking route, you can apply and get from the bank what, your, what is your civil score the banks will provide to you very, very confidentially. Therefore, since we were talking digital, a little bit of interesting piece of history, all of you know, but when we look at it, it is very amusing. Just about two decades back, we all used to deal with cash, cash in our wallets, cash physically in our pockets, in our wallets, in our banks, and we used to actually feel proud of high bank balances. And that is how th thefts used to happen 
forgery used to happen because money was easily accessible by outside people. And how did you protect? You protected through insurance, you protected through lockers and so on and so forth. 10 years later, sometime around 2010, it's just to give you an idea, don't go exactly by the date and year. The cash continued, but gradually and gradually the credit cards, the digital payments, the dematerialization of shares and mutual funds gradually started taking over, not in a very huge way, but the transition was already happening around that time. While the theft and forgery of physical cash continued, but the insurance and lockers also started becoming more and more prominent and passwords became an in thing around that time. Fast forward to 2020, virtually a significant part of the payments and transactions have become digital through e-wallets, online, DMATs through shares and mutual funds and virtual cash. While the physical theft and forgery has gone away substantially, what has replaced is, is hacking and phishing. I am myself a victim of such hacking and phishing, not once, but several times. Be very, very careful. Therefore, whatever I'm speaking is purely from my learnings and experience. And therefore, in this digital age, is the passwords and pins and OTPs and firewalls has actually replaced the insurances and lockers and all that. A little bit of prediction for the future. Everything will become virtual. Probably the currency will change in a significant way to cryptocurrency, which in today's context also you are seeing it quite phenomenally. Therefore, be very watchful. Cyber frauds will definitely multiply. And therefore, the multi-layer security in all your digital platforms is inevitable. Are you getting worried? Yes, it's a matter of worry. But can you avoid it? Absolutely no, because that is becoming the order of the day. For your daily living, you have to keep abreast of your changing times. You have to, on your own, create your multi-layer security, which I will talk about in a moment. You will have to be mindful of the cyber frauds and how to check them. So that is the journey of the money from physical to virtual. Very amusing, very interesting. This is what I was talking about. How do you protect yourself? How do you create your Raksha Kavach? Create your passwords. Keep changing your passwords very, very frequently. Keep a multi-alpha numeric special character combination password so that it's it becomes a little bit difficult to hack. Chances are there, but probability can reduce. OTP is the order of the day. As much as possible, use the OTP because that comes directly under your control. Avoid all kinds of fake calls. I need not talk about it because there is too much in the public domain and in the social space. You are all aware of it. Please avoid fake calls. Do not use others to access your bank account. Your bank statement should be fully under your control. Do not authorize to do any transactions through SMS. Touch ID has become very prominent these days. You can use your Touch ID because it works only on, only on your own finger, nobody else's. Antivirus is a mandate. Any, all of you use laptops, desktops, and mobile phones. A lot of these gadgets today come with built-in antiviruses. On top of that, you can buy antivirus to further create multiple layer of security. Please do that. Secure your shopping through 100% secure modes. Don't do online shopping recklessly. Be very careful of which platform, payment platform you're using. And finally, finally, today cloud is becoming very prominent. You can store your old confidential documents rather than physically, you can store it in your cloud and you can access it on the go. Even if you do not have your device with you, you can access it anywhere in any other device as well, as long as you know your cloud storage user ID and password with you. These are some, Anil is a wizard in technology, so he can be able to give you more tips on that. But I'm telling, talking about the basic ones, how do you protect yourself in the digital environment? This is what I was talking about a while back. Do you spend first or do you save first? 
This is another mantra of Warren Buffet, which is locked in my heart. Don't save what is left after spending, but spend what is left after savings. It is a very, very loaded statement. Think about it, your eyes will open up. Normally we do the other way around. We spend, 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 whatever is left, end of the year, we'll have to save some tax, go for some tax saving investments and save your money. It really doesn't work like that. You will not be able to grow your money in that fashion. Another few mantras from Warren Buffet on the left-hand side, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. What a wonderful thought. Whatever money you are investing, whatever money you are saving, money begets money. You should make that money work for you even while you are sleeping. So therefore, investments are of a very critical factor. And the secondly, the right hand side, investing is laying out money now to get more money back in the future. And that future could be anything. Do not think that future is just two years, three years, five years. That future could be generation. That future could be your next generation, could be your children. So be it. You have to do your investment planning in such a manner where the money really grows big at a future. And you can decide your future and accordingly do your investment plans. That brings me to the next topic of investments. Let me first talk about the personal investment plan, platter. Where are all the avenues of personal investment? If you can save your money, you can put it in the stock exchange by buying equity shares. I've just shown you an indicative graph which says how steeply the equity market has risen over the times. In just a span of two years, it has gone up almost like three folds. So it is, it is a very, very interesting, it is a very lucrative, it is a very attractive avenue of spending. But watch out, a word of caution. When you get into the equity market for investing by buying equity shares, you have to be extra careful and extra safe. Generally, I do not recommend people to go for equity market investment for a shorter tenure, because that is a very myopic view. That is a very speculative view. That does not really help in growing the money. Though I did not call out any Warren Buffet's sayings, but this was Warren Buffet's advice as well. If you have to grow money in the equity market, you will have to wait for a long period of time. Could be 10 years as well, could be 20 years as well. And bonanzas do really come. Let me just give you a small example. Just while introducing, Anil talked about this company both of us work for Dabur India right? When 10 years back, 12 years back, 13 years back, when we were both working together, the share price of the company used to be 96 rupees per share. Today, if you open the same company's stock exchange page, you will see the value of that share is 530 plus, just in a span of 10 to 12 years. Therefore, Long tenure investment is advisable for stock market. The other safer horizon is mutual funds. In stock market, you have to do a lot of research behind the companies and the stocks where you want to invest. You may not have the time, you may not have the capability, you may not have the knowledge. So why don't you depute some experts to do that on your behalf? That is exactly what the fund houses and the fund managers do. They are the experts. So what is a mutual fund? Mutual fund is when everybody pulls in money and trusts on one fund manager that you take the money, accumulate it, make my money grow and give me a return after X years. That's what the fund manager's job is. He pulls in that money and invests in the same stock market in a very, very calculated and researched way. 
and in a very calibrated way. There are various, various methods and types of doing investments. That is what the fund manager does. And that is mutual fund for you, which is a much more safer option. Another option is the unit linked insurance plan, which is actually a double benefit. The double benefit is you are investing, the money will grow. It works a little bit of extension of the mutual fund where the pooled in money gets invested into various methods of investing to fetch the returns. But the beauty is that whatever you are investing in the unit linked insurance plan is also linked to your life insurance. It is only those authorized companies who can sell you unit linked insurance plans. So it is just like a life insurance plan. Your life is secure. There's a sum assured. So in the eventuality of any mishap happening to you or your family, you can actually get that money back. The other option, of course, is a property. I don't think I have to talk about it. Uh, quite a large section of this audience is sitting in Mumbai. I'm sure you're aware about property prices, how it zooms up. And in Delhi and in most parts of the country, property is another method of investment. But you know very well the real estate market is not doing very well. This is another space which should be reserved for a longer tenure of investment. Then you have the gold, which suddenly became so attractive during the lockdown period because all other investment av avenues were becoming so unattractive. But again, watch out, ladies. What gold was very, very attractive six months back has crashed now. It has come down drastically. It went up to 51, 52,000 levels. It has come down to 43, 44,000 levels. So be watchful. This is again another investment which requires long-term-ish tenure for growing. One more avenue which has come up is also the bonds. These are very, very secure, but they are lower in terms of returns. These are secure because these are mostly government bonds. There can be corporate bonds as well. So very good companies who have a very healthy business, they offer a better return, but generally the returns for corporate bonds and the yields will be much far lower as compared to the other modes of investment. So this was a platter before you for your personal investment and the savings that you do. But having said that, you don't have to go through these traditional investments at all. Your point of interest could be something different. Your point of interest could be something much bigger. Your point of interest could be something giving back to the society. Therefore, your point of interest could be entrepreneurship and therefore starting up your own business. Before I get into any further, I would like to draw your attention on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the screen. On the left-hand side of your screen, I have listed down some very famous personalities who have become very successful startup women entrepreneurs. So you have Divya Gokulnath, who is one of the co-founders of Baiju's, which, which is really becoming very popular in today's, especially after the lockdown. You have Falguni Nair, who is one of the founders of Nika. You have Kiran Mazumda Shaw, who is a celebrity in her own capacity and has done tremendous amount of work in Biocon. You have Richa Kar, who is the owner and founder of Zivami. And you have Ritu Kumar, who is a very known personality, a fashionista, and is into the business of fashion wear. But those are the names you're aware of. I don't know whether you're aware of how long it has taken for them to be becoming super successful. For that, I would like to draw your attention on the small numbers quoted in the top right-hand corner of each and every of their photographs. Divya Gokulnath Baijus is into business for the last 10 years. Falguni Nair Naika is into business for the last 12 years. Kiran Mazumda Shaw has attained the pinnacle of glory in 42 years. Richa Kar of Zivame is there for the last 10 years. Ritu Kumar, fashionista, is, has established her business more than 50 years back. All that I'm trying to tell you is that if you are prepared to get into entrepreneurship and into business, Hold your breath. There is no shortcut. There is no 
quick win. There is no overnight gains. You will have to slog it out in a big way. You have to be mentally prepared for that. So if you see on the right hand side, phone pay, Swiggy, Paytm, Big Basket, Cars24, Uran. I'm 100% sure at least four out of these six, you are using this, or at least three out of these six, you are using this, these apps almost every day. Let me tell you, all these startups have become extremely popular, but let me also remind you, all of these startups, as we speak as of today, are into recurring losses year after year. Most of these startups, like for instance, phone pay, big basket, most of these startups are five to six years old. So which means in five to six years as well, they have not been able to make money. But yes, they are popular. Yes, they are very high utility. Yes, they are doing good service to the community, even during the lockdown period, no doubt about it. So therefore, be mindful of that fact. Taking that into cognizance, I have a recommendation of some stages of scaling up if you really wish to do business. Those who are still contemplating to start a business or are in a threshold of starting a business. And this is the four stages, which is my recommendation. Again, as I tell you, I'm nothing I'm speaking out of textbooks and theories. These are all from my own learnings and experiences. Step one, identify your passion and generate an idea. The clicking into the idea is the most vital thing. You cannot afford to go wrong over here. It is even very important to test the idea in a very small scale and maybe commercially to test it out. It is almost like doing a market research, whether people will accept, whether people will buy. Then you can go ahead and test with an investment. At this stage also, you can play very safe and do an investment which is within, within, your, within your limited means and test it out whether it is fetching a return. And then you can go all out getting into a high startup, a high level of funding through the private equity, raising few million dollars and so on and so forth. So my recommendation is not straight away to jump. You can do, there are many seasoned players who actually do it. Everybody cannot be Sachin Bansal. He also took 10 years to really build up that business. So therefore, for women entrepreneurs, unless and until you really, really do have the risk-taking capability, I think a staged gate process is, will be much more secure and safer to ride on the business that you're thinking of. And trust me, you will still be successful in an equally time span that you see with these successful ladies. From there, I would like to give you some idea, some basic, basic idea. Don't take this as any theoretical uh, lesson. Uh, you can take notes, not a problem. But generally, this is how the starting up process works. Any starting up, whether you want to start a business of any nature or you want to start a professional, uh, a professional services business of any nature, more or less this is what needs to be followed. First and foremost is to drive the purpose. Why do you want to do the business? And the purpose, in my opinion, should not be money. The purpose has to be a lot bigger than the money. Money should only be an outcome. You have to testify whether that idea of yours is solving a problem in the community or the society. If it is not, it may not be attractive and sustainable in the longer run. For example, you think about Biocon. She started 42 years back, somewhere in the 70s. There was a need, there was a necessity. Pharma market was very, very regulated at that point of time. Look at the success. Look at Ritu Kumar, fashionista, started somewhere 53 years back somewhere in the 60s, early 60s. But the need was that the problem solving was ever since then that objective was there. Then once you have hit this too, you need to do a good amount of research. 
to figure out whether that is what the real problem in the community is, whether you will be able to attract cons consumers over there. And there, from that research, you have to typically identify, as we call it in marketing language, the target audience, the TG, the target group, which is the customers. Who will be my target customers? Once you have done all that successfully, get into evaluating a business plan. You have to identify a name, a logo, which should be really catching enough to catch the attention of people. Most important, which I attach too much of importance is in the business case. You must have a rock solid business case, a business case about the entire supply chain or the entire sourcing to the marketing, to the reaching out to the customers or the entire chain of how do you want to make your product or create your service, whether it is making or manufacturing a product or whether it is doing a painting or whether it is creating some articles, whichever way it is, stack up your business case. Then you get into the financial module, model. Do you think you will be able to earn off, out of it? What should be the pricing? How much you should be able to command all this needs to partly come out of the research to stack up this business case. You should put that business case to some risk assessment as well. That we, what happens if something goes wrong? What happens if things do not work out the way I have thought about? And if you have identified those risks, quickly assess a plan B or an exit route, either of the two. A plan B is very, very essential. There are many, many businesses who have actually su succeeded in plan B. That reminds me quickly as I speak, you must have all seen the famous movie called Shole, the multi-starer, the trillion, trillion, trillion dollar uh, revenue spinner. Even today, it is hitting the charts in the OTT channels. Shole, when initially when it was released, it was a super flop. Actually, some plan B was worked out and you'll be surprised to know the plan B was to release it in a 70 millimeter format screen, which was not too very prevalent in those days. We are talking about 1970s. Just a case in point may not be the ideal example, but all that I'm trying to tell you is that plan Bs do work and you must have a plan B in mind. This is another crucial step. Identify your variable costs. If you want to make a product, what are the costs directly going into the product? Suppose you want to do garments. The, the cost of the cloth, what is the nature of the fabric? What is the cost of the fabric? What is the cost of the, uh, of the stitching? What is the cost of the threads? What is your time costs? Everything gets into these variable costs to make that product. And then you have some fixed costs as well, the electricity, the space that you're using, the people that you're employing, so on and so forth. And then you need to assess your break-even point, which means how much pieces you need to sell so that you recover as much money to at least bear your fixed costs, which means you will be retaining a zero profit, zero loss situation. That is the break-even point. If you're confident to achieve the break-even point ASAP at the fastest, you will get confidence that yes, this business can fly. And then after that break-even point, whatever volume we keep on multiplying, your profits only keep on multiplying. Finally, the most burning question, funding. There are plenty and plenty of opportunities of funding as of today. Today, the loans are being given by the banks, which are very, very vanilla loans. There are a lot of avenues where grants are given. And today, if you really want to make it big with the stage four, there are a lot of investors who are lining up to invest behind you. But... To get to this stage, you have to cover all these three stages. You can combine all three into one as well if you feel like, but testify yourself before getting there. And if you're ready with all that, get set and go. Define your corporate structure. Do you want to partner with somebody? Do you want to have a co-founder? Do you want to do it all on your own? Do you want to float shares in the market and, and float a company? Do you want to make it a private limited company? That is what the corporate structure is all about. And simultaneously, you need to build the team and you have to start on onboarding your vendors from whom you have to 
get the supplies from. By and large, that is the process of starting up. Those you're already into business, you're already aware of, you've gone through these steps, maybe you will be able to guide the others. Before going further, on the startup of a business, I just wanted to list down a reality check. Yet again, a reality check, which, which I have listed down, not from theory, but understanding from many of the people who have actually done startups, who have actually succeeded or failed. It is from their experiences, from many of the blogs that they have written, from many of the articles that they have written, I just tried to collate some of these. Number one, the purpose, which I was talking about in the initial stage. It must solve a genuine problem for the masses. It cannot be a money-making. That should not be the primary purpose. Most important, prepare for the grind. It is not easy to become an entrepreneur. You have to struggle to establish yourself. And you have to struggle for years together, as I have given some examples on both the sides of the screen. This second block, be very careful. Many of you may be asking questions, who, where are my investors? Who will give me the money? Please remember something, investors do not build businesses. They only want to enter and exit the business only to make money. That is their sole purpose. They are not here lifetime. Their only purpose is to make money. Therefore, their expectation of returns are very, very high. And therefore, the conditions of providing the money are quite stringent. Please be sure that you do not lose control at the hands of the investors. Because many investors, if the stakes are very high, they would like to control the business as well. Entire responsibility, therefore, rests with the entrepreneur to build the business. Finally, please focus on a profitable growth. Not only growth, not only profit, but a profitable growth. And therefore, I say waiting period can be very high, as you would have seen from these cases. Accelerated growth, for accelerating the growth, the product acceptance and the demand and revenue should be high, should be accelerating. Invest, invest behind promotions and publicity. You can imagine what kind of investments these people are making. It is phenomenal. It is huge. Sometimes they are buying properties in the television. Huge if, uh, investments they are making in cricket, in cricket context, in IPLs. Massive investments are going. Millions and trillions of dollars. Stakes are very, very high. I'm not saying that you do those kind of investments, but some kind of promotions are definitely required if you want to get into stage four. Very important control costs. Don't let costs go out of control. Otherwise, costs will be controlling you. And that is why you have to ensure the returns. That may not be the final objective, that, but at the same time, you cannot wait for your entire lifetime to be generating returns. With that, I would like to wish all of you bon voyage on the track of financial freedom. I would like to wish you all the good luck. As I started, if my Naniji could do it, why can't you? Why can't each one of you? And I'm sure each one of you have everything. You, you have the metal in you. It is the air in the balloon which makes it fly, not the color outside. See you soon later, but as I finish this presentation, I want to leave you with a very, very positive and a bold thought in mind with a small parting gift, which is a video. And here it goes. खोज में निकल तू
किस लिए हताश है तो चल तेरे वजूद की समय को भी तलाश है समय को भी तलाश है जो तुझसे लिपटी बेड़ी आम समझना इनको वस्त्र दो जो तुझसे लिपटी बेड़ी आम समझना इनको वस्त्र दो ये बेड़िया पिघाल के बना ले इनको शस्त्र दो बना ले इनको शस्त्र दो तो खुद की खोज में निकल तो किस लिए हताश है तो चल तेरे वजूद की समय को भी तलाश है समय को भी तलाश है चरित्र जब पवित्र है तो क्यों है ये दशा तेरी चरित्र जब पवित्र है तो क्यों है ये दशा तेरी ये पापियों को हक नहीं कि ले परीक्षा तेरी कि ले परीक्षा तेरी तो खुद की खोज में निकल तो किस लिए हताश है तो चल तेरे वजूद की समय को भी तलाश है जला के भस्म कर उसे जो क्रूरता का जाल है जला के भस्म कर उसे जो क्रूरता का जाल है तू आरती की लौ नहीं तू क्रोध की मशाल है तू क्रोध की मशाल है तो खुद की खोज में निकल किस लिए हताश है तो चल तेरे वजूद की समय को भी तलाश है समय को भी तलाश चुनर उड़ा के ध्वज बना गगन भी कब कब आएगा चुनर उड़ा के ध्वज बना गगन भी कब कब आएगा अगर तेरी चुनर गिरी तो एक भूकंप आएगा एक भूकंप आएगा तो खुद की खोज में निकल तो किस लिए हताश है तो चल तेरे वजूद की समय को भी तलाश है समय को भी तलाश है that's it ladies thank you so much for your attention i hope you liked whatever was presented i give it back to anil to coordinate the rest of it i'll be very glad to take any questions that may come up anil over to you well first of all let me clap for on the behalf of the entire audience they are all muted but let me make it Uh, we will quickly go through some questions sabal we have questions in different formats some people wanted to join but because of the current covid situation or some other urgencies they couldn't so some of them have sent their questions pre recorded to us or recorded during the period of the presentation so let me so i'll go in a mixed mode first of all let me invite manasi aditya to ask her question can i have manasi please Yes. Yes, sir. I'm here. Good Go evening. Ahead. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's my honor to be a part of this uh, seminar. I thank Sangeeta, ma'am, to invite me for the amazing experiences that I've learned from sir today. And I, you know, I uh, actually really want to inculcate it in my day-to-day -day life. I let me introduce myself. I am Miss Mansi Aditya. I am in my final year of graduation in the leading Nursing Monji College of Commerce and Economics, Mumbai. I am tutoring several students across the globe for various foreign languages, that is Mandarin, Japanese, and Spanish, since three point five years. And apart from this, I've also worked with various natives of China and Japan as a translator. I uh, one of my questions that I would like to ask. So it is. Um, if in like I'm a you know I'm a very young. Uh, I started working at a very young age. So if uh, you know if I plan to uh, open my own establish my own institute, how should I take it forward? Like uh, 
for the investments matter how should i distinguish between the personal investments and the business investments well mansi first of all thank you for your question and at your age uh, you are still a student i am really delighted that you're thinking it this way so first thank of you. all compliments all compliments to you and my best wishes for all your future endeavors thank you so much coming to your question if you are so focused to open an institute or open some kind of a institution going forward what uh, first of all if you have to decide whether it is a profit making institution or a not for profit making institution either, either which ways you have to figure out in what form and what is the purpose that you want to do as i had mentioned in any kind of a startup even if it is a non profit making it is very important for you to decide the purpose otherwise you will lose your way in the middle right so that is a very very vital thing now once you have decided whether it is profit making or not for profit making uh, if mm -hmm. it is for commercial purposes and you want uh, want investments out of it and your question is whether you would like to do that or do savings my suggestion to you is that at your age you have to definitely start building your savings because okay. by the time you get into middle age you will be left high and dry just in case if unforeseen circumstances like covid and all these things in future god knows in your generation what all will come in future be careful yeah. about always be careful about the risks so you must have some security at hand at any point of time so okay. therefore you should rely on some external money money coming okay. from outside right now at at your age and at your stage it may be very difficult for you to straight away get big money from big investors so again okay. my advice to you will be start small test okay. your idea test your institution start it small get for some small loans even if you can get some personal loans from from parents relatives that also works okay. make make the commercial purpose clear make a loan is a loan if you if you are looking at uh, at uh, starting something of yourself and looking for being funded it can be from your own known sources also True. either with either with interest or without interest but keep it absolutely transparent and then when you scale up when you get the confidence when you see the idea is working when you see that the endeavor is working and i'm sure it will work then go all out go full out you can approach banks you can approach there are a lot of grants depending on which area of work you want to do there are specific area based grants okay. for example in in the in the field of art there are a lot of specific grants which are available it all depends in what kind of field you want to since i have, you have not given me that lead or maybe you can take it up subsequently on the basis of which area you want to take you can definitely go for a loan so mm -hmm. as a next step after you have tested your idea after you have done some modest personal investments either through parents or relatives and you can refund them the money you don't yeah, have to get yeah. it to your parent as well you can be refund your money it's only just Sorry. to secure yourself and to test yourself once you're absolutely sure of it approach a bank approach a financial financial institution get the startup loan there will be limits of those loans always remember in any kind of loan you must be 500% sure about the repayability of that loan you yes. cannot enter into a debt trap as long as you are confident that your idea is working and generating money enough to repay the loans on time bingo please go ahead all my best wishes for you mansi Thank and i'm you. sure you will come out victorious thank you thank you so much sir uh, one last question uh, if i may ask uh, what are the best type of investments do you suggest for young professionals like us who are you know uh, you know just start who just started working you know and try to trying to build themselves as well as their careers so what are the best type of investments that you suggest for us uh, mansi any kind of investments always carry risk always remember this any kind of investment yeah. right if you want to buy a car also there also there will be some risk true so yeah. you, you never know there could be an accident the car may get damaged 
any kind of investment that is why in mutual funds and all they always give it as a disclaimer that mutual funds carry market risks Correct. any yeah. investment even if you want to do a business every investment will carry a risk True. you have to assess your own risk appetite okay accordingly you will have to identify which mode of investment you want to take okay okay three things in investment always remember one is risk one is return and one is the interest okay. so if you take an investment through a loan you will have to repay that loan yes. if you do an investment suppose you don't want to take a loan what you can do if you have a car or if you have a property you can mortgage or hypothecate that property and take a loan also so you are secured you know if if your endeavor goes wrong at least whatever you have mortgaged your loss is restricted to that if that risk appetite suits you you can go for that investment you can go for an ordinary bank loan also okay if you go to some private institution for loans normally interest rates of private institutions will be higher mm -hmm. so approach two or three three sources and compare them at your age you youngsters are masters in comparing all these options compare yeah. them whichever suits you on these three you remember yeah risk, risk. return and repayment comes from returns return, and yeah. the interest burden interest. yeah all these three are must be under your control if 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 you are confident on all these three that is the option that you should opt for okay okay thank you so much sir thank you so much have a great day ahead thank you very much mansi uh, well, viewers i can see a lot of people are willing to ask questions so there are few things i would like to make uh, uh, i would like to inform you one you could go ahead and ask your question in either english or hindi or mix it does not matter number 2 please try avoid questions which are very very specific because it will become the time will become short to answer those questions here mr saibal has very kindly agreed to answer to questions which are being sent to us later on you can send it to swambhu's mail account and he will be able to answer them later also so now next one i'll pick up is uh, there is a video recording that i have that i have just received which was probably done during the time the session was going on so uh, shilpa will you run video of rachana namaste Uh, first of all thank you swayambhu for giving me this opportunity i am rachna bagwe co-founder of artha sanket artha sanket is a business and economic newspaper in marathi my question for sen gupta sir would be how an entrepreneur should manage his balance sheet during this lockdown period thank you thank you rachna ji for the question it's uh, yeah sorry sorry to interrupt you uh, she is asking you a question which is related to lockdown period the pandemic I have a couple of more questions on that. I think I will give those questions also so that you can give a consolidated answer. Yes, that. that will be better. Uh, I have uh, Shrutika Rajput. Uh, unfortunately, she had to move out, so she has typed her question. I'll read it out to you. I started my business just before the pandemic started last year. Have endured several losses already. how much should i put in as working capital revenue generation is low at this time so sir maybe you can take both the questions together who has given the second question i lost her name shrutika rajput okay rashna ji shrutika ji to both of you very interesting and very relevant question at these times uh let me answer both of them because both are related to lockdown So Rajna ji first of all uh please remember that any kind of business you must have heard cash is king managing cash is the most vital thing in any business and becomes extremely critical during a lockdown kind of a situation where because of economic situation and environmental situation business almost comes to a standstill my advice to you will be to manage your balance sheet release your blocked capital as fast as possible the biggest burden in a balance sheet is the blocked capital 
which is mainly from receivables and from inventory. Now, it is, it is easier said than done, but to help your understanding, I will give you some tips. Receivables, you can try to recover by offering cash discounts. That is one of the ways you can invite people or you can attract people to make payments early. Now, cash discounts will obviously hit your profitability. But at these times, when the balance sheet is under stress, it is better to sustain some kind of a moderate loss or a hit to the uh, profitability and release the cash as fast as possible. Alternatively, if I'm not mistaken, you are probably operating in the SME, SME space. SMEs have a lot of opportunities as of today. I don't know whether you are aware, there is an RBI uh, a ventured platform called the Treads, which is under the RxIL platform of RBIL. RxIL is the Receivables Exchange India Limited. That's the platform. And the trade receivables discounting scheme is under which the RBI operates. Under this, what happens, your customers can, can pay you earlier at a particular interest, which is far, far lower than the prevailing market interest. And whatever interest they are bearing, that much of discount you can offer so that they are also protected. You help and support them. At the same time, you release your cash. The second big thing that you need to do is to unlock your block capital is to liquidate your inventory, if any. I really do not know in your nature of business how much you'll be sitting on it. But if you have, please release your block inventory. Like this, you identify all kinds of block capital in your balance sheet. Another thing I would like to tell you, during the lockdown period, the government has offered various moratoriums. Even the banks have offered moratoriums for loans. In case if you're carrying loans in your balance sheet, you can take advantage of these moratoriums. So the sole objective at this point of time for you should be to release the blocked capital as much as possible, enrich your balance sheet with cash, ensure that your loan repayments are still happening in time so that your future credit worthiness does not get affected. Finally, one mantra. And the mantra is, we always prepare for the war when we are at peace. Don't do it the other way around. Yes, lockdown has hit us, but when the situation will become back to normalcy, prepare for it and always release your block capital from the balance sheet. If you become cash rich, if you walk around through the various businesses, you will find those businesses who are very cash rich had been very successful in the lockdown. To the other point, to the other question, uh, which came that uh, just before the lockdown, you had started a business and you're already suffering losses. It is very unfortunate that yes, that's the reality. Many business has faced that situation. But Shrutika Ji, what I would like to advise you in this situation, see, end of the day, I can only empathize with you because whatever damage had to happen has been has happened. You cannot undo that damage. All that you can do is protect the losses. Don't allow losses to mount any further, which means, so it is just simple. When you have, uh, when, when you, when you have uh, this kind of a stressful situation, block the losses by releasing any kind of stocks by selling off theirs, by giving discounts, by offering discounts, protect the losses. Don't allow the losses to mount. If you are not getting orders, don't build on top of that, build any further losses. Just try to trap them. When the situation will slightly ease out, a couple of things I already mentioned in the previous answer that you can do. You can extend some payment terms, tell your vendors to negotiate and extend some payment terms. You can ask your vendors to offer vendor financing so that you can get some uh, uh, you can get some financing done through that. You can also ask for uh, the same RxIL plat platform which I just mentioned. It is the RBI's platform, which are very very nominal uh, rate of much lower rate of interest. You can ask your customers to 
release their money on the basis of that. You can yourself register into the RxIL platform of RBI. So all these means are available, A, to block your losses and B, to release your cash. This will help you to gradually and gradually to tide out the situation. And I am extremely confident that you will bounce back after the lockdown is over. Wish you all the best. Please don't get uh, disheartened. Everybody is facing this. Every company is facing this. I have full confidence and faith your business will bounce back. Please hold patience. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Uh, next question is from uh, Yogita Desh Pandey. Again, this question has come on the box. Uh, she has got two parts of the question. One, when starting new business from scratch, how to and from where to get financial support? Partly you have already answered that. The next one is, uh, I'm surprised how, how she, she has picked up that what are your hidden talents? She wants to know what are the benefits of or, or ways to finance for artists? You Thank have you. a diploma in painting. Thank you, Yugateji, for your question. Um, yes, of course, as Anil mentioned, I'm myself a painter, but I don't know in which field of art you are referring to. Let me first uh, just touch upon the previous question, how to start a business, how to get the funding. I think I have discussed uh, uh, quite some parts of it already, how to do that. And I have advised and I have given some recommendations. Uh, if you can and if you feel, if you agree, follow those recommendations. I think it will work for you. Uh, don't straight away jump into anything. Don't start, start taking uh, money right away go in a very planned and methodical manner, I think you will be successful. I'm assuming that you are wanting to do some startup in the field of art itself. You have not mentioned what kind of art. So there are various, various types of artists or art forms which can get funded in which you can actually explore. There can be fine arts, there can be performing arts like music and dance, there can be art curators, there can be photography, there can be museum experts, there can be uh, research uh, driven on arts, there could be jewelry design as well, uh, garment design as well, excuse me. Wh why I'm trying to tell you all this is that in each of these art forms, there are several types of funding available, especially through grants. There are a lot of government grant also, and there are a lot of private grants also. So if you are talking about uh, uh, you know, skill development in art or higher studies in art or doing any such kind of research or those kind of things in art, various types of scholarships are, are available. Similarly, for the promotion of art, there are a lot of uh, promotion which is done by the India government itself. Uh, and a lot of international organizations also do these kind, kind of fundings, which you can definitely approach. I would like to name a few like for instance, Bombay has a very, very prominent Bombay Art Society through which they themselves do a lot of funding, especially if you're looking for exhibitions and all that. They, they do self-funded exhibitions and all, which you can be very watchful about. They take the applications through the websites itself. There is another very famous, which I was curious for quite some time I had been following uh, in the middle, I slightly lost track. Maybe I, I will, you are provoking me to uh, uh, do that once again. And that is called the Inlax Shivdasani Foundation. Uh, mostly, most probably it is based out of Bangalore. It was started long time back. If I'm not mistaken, some 30 years back it was started. Maybe more, I could be mistaken. But they are doing huge amount of work in funding artists in various, but they are all specific purpose driven. Now that is what you have to identify. What is your purpose? If you want to visit any international country for research on art or want to attend symposiums, they do those kind of fundings also. They actually have a lot of residencies where they provide studios, including apartments. You can actually go and stay. Uh, stay. They, they offer a lot of uh, curating of arts programs as well. So there is plethora of options of available. As Anil mentioned on a lighter side, uh, uh, though I'm a diploma holder in arts, but I did not pursue that. You know why? 
because when i i used to do this in the 70s when i used to take my diploma everybody discouraged that the only way to earn your living will be to do paint cinema posters because those days cinema posters used to be hand painted so that really frightened me that as if i would not have a profession but now i realize i made a mistake today plethora of options are available please please explore them uh, there is one more very interesting let me make a mention of this foundation of indian contemporary art they also do quite a lot of uh, these kind of uh, programs but unfortunately there is no specific loan facility available these are all very targeted grants and funding which are all time based and period based so for, for example foundation of indian contemporary art for does funding let us say for a year and they have done for 21 22 as well as late as that so during the lockdown period as well so these kind of options are readily coming to my mind as i hear your question but uh, i'm sure you can explore more and more if you have any further questions get back i will try to do a little bit more study on this space okay thank you uh, let me invite uh, leena datta gupta to ask her question can i have leena datta gupta on yeah hi uh, good evening mr sen gupta good evening mr anil and dr sangeeta uh myself leena datta gupta i am into uh, end to end solution for aviation and drone surveys and uh, it was a very very nice uh, lovely presentation uh, very very informative and uh, my question half of the things you have covered sir but still i would like to know what are the schemes for uh, uh, what are the schemes launched by government for women startups and uh, uh women entrepreneurs uh if you can guide any any specific platforms for those thank you so much lina ji thank you for your question uh first of all i am i am very impressed with the kind of work that you are doing and the space that you are in maybe some day i myself will approach you for for something like that it's thank very interesting so and i feel i feel so so good when a woman like you actually venture out into these kind of things so all compliments to you uh, and uh, thank you very much coming to your question uh, see honestly speaking the all kinds of funding opportunities are a uh, very very uniform to almost all types of entrepreneurs now it all depends as i had mentioned uh, in my presentation it all depends on the purpose that you are looking for i don't know whether you are looking for funding in your own space of aviation and drone that you are working for if you if that is the scale up i'm assuming that you are already in a very mature stage as i was talking about those four stages those are my developed stages they are not theoretical ones so if you are already matured and if you want to really catapult if you have tested your idea if they are working absolutely fine i would recommend then you to go big if you are really very confident about it if you have the setup and and if provided it's a very very good commercial model so there are two types of investments one investment is to make an investment and to stay afloat scale up only for the service of the community and the nation where it is not a very strong commercial proposition that is one kind of funding there is another kind of funding where if you feel convinced that you have a very strong commercial model as a result of a which you have a very high return model or if you invest more there is a possibility of getting very high returns if you feel confident about that and if because in your case it's quite a matured and a space that you have already ventured i don't know how many years you have done that but if you are confident about that if you are confident about high returns then go big then i would suggest you can actually explore private equities and other uh, venture capital as well and there I are mean, many avenues of doing that there are very many avenues there are established players for doing that uh, we will only have to target some very specific uh, venture capitalist or private equity funds and i can tell you if you if you if you can find one for yourself good if you need any help i'll be i'll be most obliged to try to help you out but my advice to you is that go for very targeted investment now because now the time has come for you to catapult and scale up and get into a much much bigger platform yeah 
Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thanks, Linaji. Thank you. Next, we have a video question from Anishka Sarpal. Shilpa, can you play the video, please? Hello, I'm Anushka Sarpal and I'm a student. So I have a question. Would you recommend taking a student loan or dig into savings while studying abroad? Thank you. Thank you, Anishka, for your question. I'm really impressed that as a student, you are really thinking in these terms. Uh, well, straight away answer to your question is that, yes, I would always prefer that you go for an education loan even if you are having savings in your kitty. I'll tell you why, very simple. And this is, I'm taking Anishka's question to address the remaining audience as well, which I may not have specifically mentioned in my presentation. Always remember in life, always an emergency fund is required to, to be really funding for the rainy days. And this Corona situation is one like that. So even if you have a savings pool with you, it is better to retain that and go for an education loan. There are a lot of advantages. Education loans are available at very reasonable rates of interest of 7.5% to 10%, 11%. Educational loan is based on the education of the candidate. The borrower is the student, not anybody else. There can be a co-borrower who is normally the parent as well. If the loan amount is very big, then they may ask for some hypothecation of pledging of some property, which is not a very concerning thing because after that higher education is over, normally the student gets into the job and from the earnings and the salaries, the education loan is paid off. This also helps. Education loan is a very good way to start a career or life at a young age because if you can service the loan very well, if you can repay it as per the terms in proper timing, you stand a very good chance for all future loans like home loans, car loans, and any other loans, even business loans for that matter. It becomes very easy because your credit worthiness, and I was, I was referring to the civil score, that goes up substantially, and that helps you in taking future loans as well. So yes, I would always recommend uh, to go for an educational loan. Not to forget, there are tax benefits as well. So the entire interest cost, you actually save. You actually get some money out of it by saving tax. So yes, my recommendation would be to go for education law. Okay, next I invite uh, Mrs. Kalpana Jadav to ask her question. May I have Kalpana Jadav on the screen, please? Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Good evening. Hi, Kalpana. I would like to ask you one question, sir. If we do a business and we take a salary from our so, is it a good or not? Kalpana Ji, you asked a very good question. And I think that you are already doing a small business, so you are asking a question. Look, one thing is, first of all, the business you are doing, the business is different, and your personal life is different. There are two different things. Now, what do you do in the business format? I don't know what you do in the business. Normally, business is a different entity. Whether it is a sole proprietorship, or a proprietorship, or a partnership, or a small private limited company, or any other format, the business and the business name is a different business. You can understand an invisible being, an invisible entity. From there, to take a salary, there is no doubt about it. You can take it, it is legitimate, it is legitimate. Legal है कोई problem नहीं है उसमें. You can always show yourself. आप salary भी ले सकते हैं, आप commission भी ले सकते हैं. वो उस business के लिए खर्चा हो जाएगा, आपके लिए वो income हो जाएगा. आपका tax returns में जब आप खुद का tax return दिखाओगे, उसमें आप उसको income दिखाओगे. जब आप business का tax return करोगे, उसमें आप उसको खर्चा दिखाओगे. तो इसमें इस ये उचित है, ये ऐसा कोई concerning बात नहीं है. आप बिल्कुल ले सकते हो आप अपने आप को वो दिखा के एम्प्लॉय दिखा के आप सैलरी ले सकते हो मेरा मानना ये है आप अगर कमीशन लोगे तो शायद आप ज़्यादा पैसा भी ले सकते हो अगर आपका प्रॉफिट हो रहा हो तो वो प्रॉफिट से आप कमीशन ले सकते हो ऐसे भी कर सकते हो थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू कल्पन Shilpa, please play the video of Sudha Shriram. Sudha Shriram. 
Hi, my name is Uda Sriram and uh, I'm currently staying in uh, Dublin, that is the capital city of Ireland. And um, I have my own uh, food business and that is called as Ananta Foods that is registered with the health and safety executive that is a very strict and uh, governing law governing body in uh, Ireland. So my food business is registered. I am a certified food handler without which I cannot enter into this business. I have been doing this um, business and I'm proud. This is the only vegetarian takeaway uh, hotel in Dublin currently. So I'm doing this business past six months and I started with like around 200 euros monthly turnover. And I'm proud, like today I do around 12 to 1250 euros um, per month. That's around like one lakh rupees. Um, my main question to the dignitaries is I, I actually source a lot of food stuff uh, from uh, the exclusive women group. I'm sure you would know Ami Udyogini and some other corners from India, but purely women. Um, this is like to make it more local plus global. So um, to the respected dignitaries, my question is, is there a special a bracket or a concession for the women entrepreneurs in India uh, if they want to export something to Indians like me who are settled abroad, but who do business solely with some things which are available in India? Um, Thank you in advance and uh, thank you, Sangeeta, so much. Well, thank you, Sudhaji, for, for your question. It's a very, very interesting question. Uh, since this is a recorded version, I'm not sure whether you are seeing this or maybe you will see it later. So let me take this opportunity first and foremost to compliment you from uh, your uh, question, I came to know that you're running this business sitting in Dublin, Ireland for the last six months. First of all, it's a wonderful place. I have been there. I really envy you. It's a beautiful place to be staying there. And it is equally beautiful and brilliant that you sitting over there are doing this business. So all compliments and congratulations to you. Coming to your question, yes, there are a lot of assistance which are available to women entrepreneurs, uh, even to other entrepreneurs as well for doing exports. Now, I get to know from your question that you are into the food business. So I'm assuming you are exporting out of India a lot of food items. Now, under the various export incentive or assess assistance schemes, there are various types of assistance available for each type of product. For food and food products, there is a spe specific type of assistance available by the Agri and Processed Foods Export Authority of India, Development Authority, which is called the APEDA. That's how it is called. Now, APEDA actually provides a lot of assistance in different, different types to the exporters in India. And they generally cater to majority of these specific food items which are either processed or are grown in India. I'm assuming from your question that your required products will all be captured under, under the APEDA scheme. APEDA themselves have a lot of schemes under which they do financial assistance, depending on the nature of the product, those kind of assistance. Now, those assistance are purely to the women exporters and in different types of assessments, mainly setup oriented. So if the women entrepreneurs are wanting to set up their units various types of assistance for each type of unit setup is given, like for instance, for metric handling, like for instance, setting mm -hmm. up the shed, et cetera, et cetera. So this is one type of assistance which is given by the APEDA. And there are plethora of them. If you really are more interested to see more in details, you can go to the APEDA website. It's a very, very exhaustive web website. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Second thing is the financial assistance. Banks yeah. give more of financial assistance not only to women, to any kind of exporter. And the most luc lucrative one, according to me, is the PCFC, which is the pre-shipment credit in foreign currency. This can actually benefit you also. Pre-shipment credit is nothing but almost like a loan which happens even before the shipment has happened. That's 
supports the entrepreneurs in terms of getting it funded. Now you, when you are importing it into Ireland, you can actually in the commercial terms build that cost as some kind of a cost or you can mutually share or pass on some discount or something like that. You can mutually agree on that. And that is a very useful one. I don't know whether your suppliers are already taking advantage of the PCFC, but I think they should and they must do it. Similarly, there are packing credit loans. There is EFC account which they can take advantage of. So it has to be seen that how the business model of the vendors work out because whether they are supplying only to you or whether they are supplying to others as well, which they can accumulate and take bigger assistance, those things need to be assessed. The last thing I would like to mention, the only point of concern which happens in an export is in terms of the currency fluctuations. If the rupee is depreciating, the exporters generally tend to rejoice, but it will be a problem for you maybe. End of the day, you will be paying in euros and the exporters tend to earn more money. But if the rupee is strengthening, then it definitely becomes a point of concern for the exporters. The catch which happens is in the intervening period between when you have placed the order and when the time comes for making the payment. If the fluctuation happens at that point of time, then that becomes a point of concern for the exporters. That is something which both of you have to mutually agree and you have to hedge that. These are the three, four top things that I can think of at this moment, but uh, depending on what will be the specific nature of product of export and what are the nature of business of the vendors, that can be studied to further expand and exploit and enhance all these assistance so that maximum gains can be derived out of them. Thank you very much for the question, Sudaji. I hope this has helped you to clarify your doubt. Well, friends, uh, we are very short of time because we have overrun quite a bit. So I have, I'll take one more question. And uh, remaining questions, people can keep typing. From there, I can pick up two. Please type it in the chat box. But that will be the end. Beyond that, you can always send in your questions to swambu at gmail.com, which will be answered. So let me have Pooja Savant to ask her question now. Good evening, all. I would like, first of all, I would like to thank Sangeeta ma'am to give me opportunity to attend this very interesting and informative session. I would like to ask, sir, uh, should I continue to have my independent bank account after marriage or retain my bank account after marriage? Uh, Pooja, can you once again repeat your question? Are you saying you want to retain or you want to close? Can I yes. have your question once again? Uh, should I continue to have my independent bank account after marriage or retain my bank account after marriage? There is no problem. You can please continue your bank account. That's not an issue at all. Because in the eyes of law, in the eyes of any kind of commercial law, you are a separate individual. You have your individual identity. You are a woman. You are an Indian woman. You have your own rights. You don't have to worry your status, your identity, nothing changes after marriage. So your bank account can continue as is. You can simply uh, give your marriage registration. And if in case, if you want to change the name of your account, that's completely up to you. Even that is also not necessary. Thank you, sir. But it would be preferable because only ensure just one point of guidance for all future practical purposes, because you will start earning money, you will start paying taxes, you will have your Aadhaar card, you will have your PAN card. Please ensure everywhere your name stands to be the same. So by virtue of that, you have to ensure that you have one common name across every public domain and authority that your name is published, including the bank account. Otherwise, it will di become difficult for you at an older age or maybe in future times to come. Hope that clarifies your question. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, I don't have any other question pending with me in the chat box. So we look at it. There are a few things. Uh, can I have the or it, uh, can I have the uh, the initial guests on the screen, please? Nehaji, Dr. Rama, Abradita and Dr. Sangeeta. 
Well, there are a few things that I would like to uh, tell the uh, people who have participated with this. Saibal has very kindly agreed to answer questions which are coming later on to the Gmail. That is number one. Number two is he has also extended help in case we want to have him another session on a on a pointed set of questions. In case we can collect those questions, we can have a smaller session with him and he can answer those, but that will be only for limited audience for pointed questions. Uh, friends, uh, we wanted to do this uh, se session at the time when we had started planning for this. There was no pandemic second wave which was coming in. Life was looking like, okay, suddenly all this happened. Many of us uh, could not join today because of uh, some somebody or the other not being well or things like exigencies at home, being quarantined and things like that. I am myself quarantined in my house because somebody in the family is uh, was positive 14 days back. So my quarantine period gets over tomorrow, though I am perfectly fit and fine. So I would like to actually uh, uh, thank Sebel, of course, and uh, would also like to thank all of you to join. I think this was the first time that we could get about 100 people online on Sambu platform. That was fantastic. I have one post which I, which I received from one of our Swambu senior, Ms. Rajini Kansal, who sent few words today morning as a prayer to God in today's circumstances. And I thought it will be fitting to read it in the end before we close the day. Hey Ishwar, Jo sankramit hai unhe swast lab do. Jo ventilator par hai unhe shwas do. Parijano ko vishwas do. Bhaibit hai manav. Unko apne astitu ka vishwas do. So with this uh, prayer to the God, let's hope the coming times will be good. We will be able to win this uh, current uh, situation. Thank you once again, Saibal. In case any of the organizers want to have a word, please go ahead. Abradita, you would like to say something? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so first of all, uh, I'm not from the finance background. So I was uh, you know, wondering how Sir is going to reach out but when I attended the session, it was just, you know, uh, I can't express, it was so simple and so easily reached out and understood by people who are, I think, not even from the finance background. And it was made very interesting. And the best was the ending with the video. Thank you so much, sir. It was really very insightful. Thank you Dr. very much. Yeah. Thank you, sir. As Abradita said, I also echo the same views. I was also a little apprehensive because we had quite a few students who were attending the session. So your examples and case studies that you took up were so relevant and they could connect to them because this is what we discuss in class also about Baijus and Naikas, everything. So thank you so much. Very interesting and information, informative session. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rama. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, uh, can I say something? Yeah, please. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm Shanti Fernandez from St. Miras uh, faculty. Uh, sorry, I uh, joined late because of certain uh, college commitments, but whatever I attended uh, later part of the session was excellent, sir. Uh, with simplicity, sir explained. It was very clear about the concepts and he uh, answered the questions very aptly. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank uh, Shanti you. Fernandez, sorry, is a finance expert. No, uh, just financial no, management. No. Yeah. No. So yes. Yeah. I just I just teach a few of the concepts, sir. For practical inputs, we will be uh, surely coming to you. Then, ma'am, you should correct my answer scripts properly. I may be not <laughs> putting well in your hands. <laughs> no, sir. No, I, we are not having that much of advanced knowledge and practical knowledge as you have. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sen Gupta. As uh, uh, Dr. Abrita and uh, said that you know she doesn't she doesn't know much about finance. 
I think I I also agree with her. I mean, I had absolutely no knowledge about what you the way you shared everything. It was so simple. Uh, I have never uh, attended a finance session which has made things so simple for uh, all of us to understand. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Neha ji. Pandita ji. Uh, first of all, uh, Saibal ji, uh, with the, such a mixed bag audience, I have to say uh, compliments for you to uh, handle them so beautifully, because you know we have got uh, audience which comprises of students, working pro uh, professionals, entrepreneurs. So it's quite a dicey uh, task anyway to address women, and on top of that, women from different fields is like you know. But uh, you have handled every point so beautifully. And even like uh, Fernandez Ma'am mentioned, uh, that even if a person is not from the finance field, he or she will be able to understand it. Very lucid information, very simple. It was like a parent explaining to a child. So, you know, you simplified it. So, wonderful, wonderful. And uh, like uh, Chatterjee Ma'am mentioned, the video at the end, what an impact. What an impact. And this coming from a gentleman, I'm getting goosebumps while I speak right now. So uh, thank you. Thank you for your time. And uh, we were speaking about finance. There was one uh, notification which I received that Swayambu does it charge any fee? No, Swayambu is completely non-commercial. We do not charge any fee, donation or membership or anything of that sort. So there is no finance while Swayambu is concerned. Every other thing I think uh, Sen Gupta Ji has done ju total justice today. And if there are any more queries, I think uh, when the query was simple, like, should I retain my account? You know, people don't even think about this. A simple query like, uh, you know, should I take a salary? I think these are very important questions which women don't ask. Right? They don't know whether I should ask this. They feel, you know, uh, but I think it is better to be a fool once than to be a fool forever because we have got fantastic mentors and uh, guides like Saibalji and Anilji and Dr. Amma and Chatterji ma'am. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. I had a fabulous time. Thank so, you. Thank you, Sangeeta ji. Lastly, I would like to mention if everybody found it very simple, the credit goes to two people. One is me because I don't know finance. So I told him, first of all, you have to make me understand. And second is his wife, whose name is Kaushiki. She said, if you don't understand me, then you won't get food. So that is what it is. And uh, she being a musician by herself refuses to understand finance. So <laughs> the credit goes to two of us. Perfect, so, perfect. Thank you once again to everybody and uh, we had a wonderful time. We actually overrun the time by quite a bit, but I think it was worth what every minute was worth is spent. And uh, we would wait for your questions and we would uh, keep doing these kind of initiatives under Swambu from now onwards. So oh. till last time you were seeing one-to-one -one interviews with the youngsters and senior citizens, etc. We are trying to change formats. In fact, we took a break for quite some time, primarily yes. because we were thinking of going live because of the pandemic situation was improving in December and January. But again, the situation has totally changed. So we'll have to think of a different format. So we'll do whatever we can. Our objective is to bring in as much knowledge and as much confidence to youngsters uh, senior citizens and to everybody. So thank you very much and uh, uh, hope the God saves us. Yes, please. One minute. I would just like to thank all the organizers once again and our technical team in crawl, Rohit Lokhande and Shilpa Jede for coordinating the entire episode. Thank you so much. It was actually flawless. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Anil. Thanks for all the help and support. Thank you, Sangeeta Ji. Most welcome. Our pleasure.